just plain old too steep. Um, we need some lighting. Um, uh, I know the park director has pointed out that, uh, you know, particularly in the evenings uh, along the, I'm sorry, I think it's the north side of the pond, you know, where, where typically people are coming out, uh, there's no lighting there at all. Uh, and and um, we're going to try and see if we can't somehow implement some lighting uh, in that area, or at least we'd like to consider that. Our showers are breaking down substantially. Uh, we spent a lot of money on plumbers this year. Uh, we need to uh, install some heavy-duty uh, plumbing equipment in there. Again, on a, on a peak weekend, we're flushing, God knows, 5,000 people through on a weekend. Uh, it's a lot, a lot of activity. Uh, and our bathroom building roof, and that's, that's the uh, building as you drive in straight ahead. Uh, that roof, if you take a look at it, if you walk around the building, you will see the deterioration is substantial there. Uh, we do need to uh, do something. We've been kind of band-aid repairing it. Um, privacy panels in the men's and women's bathrooms, again, they're rotting out from the bottom. Uh, many of them are, are probably 25 years old or so. Uh, and then lastly, as uh, uh, Director Joffrey had pointed out, we have to get a better handle on our dog policy. Uh, we've had a number of incidences where safety is now a, a concern and, and we're not quite sure uh, how we want to handle that. But those are our maintenance and, and, and public safety type priorities that came out of these discussions. Um, we talk about other physical improvements, you know, things like water fountains and, and so forth. Um, we uh, need to upgrade one of our trucks with wider wheels, you know, maybe getting more sand for the beach, uh, do some beach replenishment, etc. So there's a lot of different items in there. Golf cart, for example, last season we rented two golf carts because we didn't have enough coverage. Uh, to uh, be in all the places we needed to be at the times we needed to be there. Uh, so we rented two additional golf carts uh, to be able to do that. Uh, marketing promotion, there's a, again a whole list of marketing and promotion items uh, from uh, you know, sending letters out to uh, permit holders, more advertising uh, of events, perhaps having more events, more concerts, those kinds of things. Uh, and then the rest of the recommendations go into specific recommendations by job category. So you'll look at the cashiers and some of the things we want to do with the cashiers, the rangers and security, uh, the lifeguards, the parking attendants, and the maintenance staff. Uh, so it, it, again, it is a, a substantial document. Uh, it covers a tremendous amount of ground. Uh, these are recommendations that the staff feels the commission should consider. All right, not that every one of them has to be accepted, but some of them are, are fairly easy to implement, some of them are much more difficult, and some of them require substantial capital investment. Uh, the last item in there is uh, the uh, uh, development of the towers building for year-round use, uh, and there's a, uh, an agenda item on here in terms of uh, the draft RFP. So uh, in light of that, uh, you finish up with a uh, wristband proposal. Again, the staff is looking to perhaps implement uh, wristbands uh, for better beach control, uh, better beach access control. Our feeling there is, is that uh, uh, that will help uh, improve, uh, how can I call it, uh, uh, managing the people getting in and out of the beach uh, more effectively and, and perhaps uh, uh, better accounting for cash. Anything from the commission? Uh, I have uh, one question. I actually have a lot of questions because there's a lot here to digest. But one of the things that you asked us to concentrate on was the maintenance and public safety issues. Right. And in particular, there are some items that are delineated. Now, the costs associated with those items, are those covered or in the pro projected or proposed budget for next year, or these additional items? How would you break this down as far as the costs associated with these items, the beach tunnels, the bathrooms, entrance ramps, and how do they dovetail into the budget that has been proposed in those categories? Well, um, 
A, the answer to your question is, is the majority of these are not included because the majority of so these capital projects. Are, are substantial and capital projects. Which, which leads me to the question that we're going to have to discuss about what to do about having a capital fund and something that we've grappled with in 50000 this year and I know not, none is projected for next year as well. And I think that we really have to come to some decision as a commission not having a capital project because we're always in this quagmire or quandary. I have a quick question for uh, Mr. D'Elia. Sure. The um, bathroom building. The bathroom building, if I remember a handful of years ago, maybe a little longer, <coughs> there was a tree that came down. Yes. Tree came cracked down. the top, one, uh, the, the, um, the roof, took out a, uh, uh, I think, some structural supports. The there was an insurance claim that went through. That's correct. The money, the money was had and the money wasn't spent. Now this is historic. This is, this is ongoing. Okay, so what I want the commission to realize and what I want everyone to realize is these beach tunnels, mm -hmm. I wouldn't let my kids go in there. Mm -hmm. Okay? The, the, uh, the, the stairs, I've walked them. Um, these are definitely items that need to take priority. Now, Lisa Easton, uh, in all of her hard work, you know, she kind of prioritized everything. You know, let's, you know, let's get this the buildings. Let's get this envelope protected. Let's let's protect it so there's no further damage. So, Mayor Feinstein's uh, spot on when it comes to this capital uh, capital budget, and these items here, and that's the reason why I mentioned yeah. them. Thank you. These are so historic. This is, <laughs> these are 15, 20 year, you know, in the making. And, uh, and that's where, uh, that's where my, of all of this here, this is the one, <laughs> these are the things that, that drew my attention because I've, I've watched this happen and nothing's been, no, nothing's been taken uh, into consideration. So this is very important. So, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess what drew my attention uh, was, and there certainly is a lot here, it's very comprehensive and I don't think that we can really address all of the items that are here uh, tonight. I think it's uh, food for thought, and maybe at some point we as a commission go through this as a punch list uh, yeah. between now and the next meeting, uh, and, and you know, we, we give you more concrete guidance as to which ones we right. as a commission want to go right. for. Yeah. Uh, but the two themes that I called out of this were, I think, two themes that I certainly would like to pursue going forward, and I, and I, I think there's a consensus on the commission to do it as well, which is uh, looking at expenses and looking at automation. Uh, so, and I think both of those uh, are in here. The one thing that actually did catch my eye up front is uh, there's a, a paragraph on the first page that says, while automated parking is probably a good idea, maybe not for the 2011 season. <coughs> uh, I guess I, I would suggest that we do try to do it for the 2011 season. And in fact, as Mayor French noted, at the top of the program tonight, uh, the RFP, the draft RFP, is on the agenda, and uh, I think that is something that we should uh, go forward with sooner than later and, and try to do it for 2011. Um, I, I think that the wristband proposal uh, might be encompassed by uh, what the RFP uh, might call for. Certainly, we can we can talk about it there. But um, so uh, you know, certainly there has to be some synergy between staff and commission. Uh, this may be one of the few points where I would put more of an emphasis than may appear in this report on going for automation uh, as soon as possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else from the Commission? Uh, yeah, I, I, I've got a, a lot to say on this. First of all, I probably agree with with majority of these recommendations, um, but I think one of the reasons why my frustration this year is the first sentence, we made great strides in 2010 despite the misleading criticisms of some people. I think it's the wrong, wrong approach. We're representatives of the people that use the park. And the problem why I think there's a sense of uh, criticism or misleading is because people don't know. I sit on this commission and we still don't have an operating rhythm. You know, we don't have set calendar dates. We get a list of ideas, which seem good, but I don't know. The public should have some input on these ideas. So I think we got to get back to fundamentals as a government body to say, 
These are the, our objectives. Put it out to the public, analyze it, and then decide. Because if we're talking today about not doing automated parking, we talked about this my very first meeting of getting away from government running a manual parking system. So I, you know, even though I agree with some of these recommendations, I don't know if we should go to ten dollars versus twelve dollars. Where's the data? What's the process for us to lead up to making some of these decisions? So I'd first like to know how this commission feels we should operate. I think it should start with the, the town of Rye sitting down with the city of Rye and talking about you know working better together on some of these things. Well, maybe we'll do a resolution later that talks about the city staff looking at at ways. But you know we're going to come back here in December, and to Mike Corbett's point, we're not going to have the RFP out there. We're going to stumble into January, February, and then we're going to be forced to just go along. Now, we have asked for 11 months now to have a CIP meeting. And what's going to happen when, when the tunnels have to be built, the, this commission is going to go to the city of Ryan and say, we need $500,000 or whatever the number is. Councilman Sack and I are going to have to go to our council and say, we have to bond the money. Well, we have $1.3 million left that we can bond in the city of Rye. We're not going to put it towards these tunnels. And there has to be a, a, a coordinated communication plan where we're all on the same page. So to me, these are really just a list of ideas. There's no real process in place for us to effectively make decisions. So I'd rather get to that point first and get the fundamentals of capital planning um, and decision making. I agree with uh, Commissioner French. It's important that uh, that uh, we have, I, I, I specifically uh, setting calendar dates. That's a, that's important. That's going to be the the structure, the parameters that we work within. And uh, and with regards to uh, you know these capital expenditures. And again, I have to compliment this board, exclusive of myself, because I haven't been part of any of the votes. The the progress that you've made in such a short time. Uh, to address the uh, the lack of uh, of uh, reaction of the prior the prior commission, um, that's that's kind of unfortunately where we are right now. So the reason why we, we're looking at all these capital plans now, and the reason why these tunnels are in such distress, it's because of the uh, the lack of action of prior commissions. Uh, because if there was a plan, if there was a capital plan put in place uh, that was uh, responsible, uh, we would not we would not be in that position. The the, the pavilion, uh, the uh, uh, would not be the, the administration building would not be in the condition it's in. The uh, everything would be better and would be in a maintenance program now. Right now, where everything is playing catch up. Now. With regards to um, the $125,000 for this automation, I, I think it's great. Um, and I, what I'd like to see, though, if we're going to spend the money on that, is we, we do need to come up with this capital plan. And, uh, and is that, that true? This board's been acting, asking for a, a meeting for the capital plan for 11 months. It hasn't happened. The city of Rye has a city planner that puts together our capital plan, and nowhere in that plan is anything from Rye Town Park. And, and I've been saying, look, if you're going to come to the citizens of Rye and ask us to fund a capital project, I want that project on my city of Rye capital plan. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, we've talked about the building. We've talked about, well, the roof is coming along. Thank you very much. But that was something that was put on us. To, we had to, we had to, oh, I had to vote here. for, oh, right? Sorry. And we ended up having to, having to, to bond for that. Um, no, actually, we, we had to take it out of cash. So these are financial, these are big financial decisions that then when I hear things about we're raising the rates, the, the parking rates, well, because we, the money's got to come from someplace, and there's no strategic thinking. I, I would suggest we put together a, a strategic committee. It doesn't have to be us. We all have day jobs. It could be a group of people to sit down and say, these are the things we want in the park, and this is how we're going to fund it. I think there's got to be not a commission meeting, but a strategy session to say, and, and Councilman Sack has been calling for this to say, what do we want out of the park? And then we, we listen to the residents and we set policy and structure around that. But I'm not looking forward to going through another year of, of stumbling through 
And then what will happen, come May, the staff will say, you're throwing too much change at, at us all at once. Mayor Feinstein's been saying she wanted to vote on pricing tonight. Well, I said that... Last month you wanted to vote on pricing. I, well, what I...